guys and welcome back to another Toy Command video. So in this video, this is my thoughts on how I feel the upgrades have gone to the Quad 405. Now, if you've been following me for a while, you will know that I fitted this Quad 405 with audio note capacitors. Now, these are the top audio note capacitors called Kaisa. Now, I'm not entirely sure if that's the way you pronounce it, but that's the way I'm pronouncing it. So, um, so I had quite a lot of negativity about these capacitors. Uh, and I had one comment that says, I don't know what I'm doing of, and you can ruin your amplifier. Now, do you personally think that I would spend 300 plus on capacitors on a whim to put into this amplifier? No, no, I wouldn't. I don't, so, do you know what? Some comments just amaze me. So I'll, I'll give you a little insight on what I did. Okay, I contacted Audio Note. Now, what you've got to remember about these Audio Note capacitors is they're not made by Audio Note. They're under the Audio Note brand, but they are a copy of the Blackgate capacitors that were made in the 90s that are real quality. And they're made by Rubicon. So after talking to Nick at Hi-Fi Collective, uh, he told me that these are the best capacitors. So I thought I'd contact Audio Note myself. And because these capacitors don't have any information about them on there, because they're trying to keep the capacitors, uh, how can I say it, secretive, the formulation that they use. So they don't bother putting like the ripple levels or anything on these capacitors. So after talking to Audio Note, I um, I emailed over to them images of the quad boards and the power supply, uh, and I also emailed them over the diagrams of the wiring of the quad. So. I haven't done this on a whim. I haven't just made this up in my own head and think, thought to myself, I can upgrade this really easy. No, if these capacitors wouldn't have been right for it, I wouldn't have put them in. Trust me. Anyway, so after talking to the guy, um, I had a phone conversation with one of the engineers at Audio Note. He confirmed that all of the capacitors, the Kaisa, would work perfectly in this circuit. So then that's when I spoke to Nick again at Hi-Fi Collective and I purchased all these capacitors to go in this amplifier. I digress anyway. Let's move on to um, how I feel these upgrades have gone. Now, the first word I want to say is, wow. Whew. These, uh, I am speechless, to be honest with you. I wasn't expecting this amp to be elevated to the level it's gone to. Now, one of the first things I noticed is, I purchased this as a used Quad 405 about two years ago now, I think it was. And the guy had refurbed it all and he said it was perfect and everything else. So when it turned up, I always noticed there was a, you couldn't hear it unless you went right up to the speaker. But it was always a slight back hum that came deep from inside. It was, it was like a, a very small hum. And it always sort of annoyed me, even though you couldn't hear it. And what's happened now is that's been eradicated totally. The noise floor has become very quiet, very quiet indeed, um, which has uh, really pleased me. Even playing vinyl records, some of them that are, are noisy and have uh, have a uh, yeah, very bad. Some of some of the old stuff that I've got has very bad uh, surface noise. Even that has really become more quieter. Uh, and I'm sure that's to do with lowering of the noise floor. 
Moving on to uh, the base performance of the Quad 405 before I'd done the upgrades, I always found it was slightly on the base light side of, uh, of Basie. Um, and then I had to increase the volume on the subwoofer at the back slightly. Um, although these new speakers that I've just finished, the bass was better with those than the mini monitors I had before. These medium monitors that I produce now have definitely got a deeper bass because there are a bass reflex speaker now opposed to a sealed box. But since I've done the upgrade, I've had to turn the subwoofer down because the uh, the amp has become come a lot more. The bass has become so much more than it was before. So on some of the classical tracks I played, and I picked out these specially. Um, when you hear a bass drum go, you you hear drumming on a bass drum. It's got that real nice bass to it opposed to being on the slight tinny side of bass if you get what I'm saying so moving on to the sound stage um, it's become wider and deeper and the imaging within the sound stage I mean there's there, there seems to be more airiness around instruments that, that was there but this has increased and what's strange was when I had the mini monitors on here, they the the sound stage and the imaging was slightly better than the medium monitors. And what this upgrade has done has taken that sound stage and imaging to the next level. And now these mini monitors are sounding as good on that side of it. As the sealed boxes of the mini monitors were detail now has improved definitely I mean I before I did all this I sat back for a couple of days uh, in the evenings really listening to I picked out a load of tracks and that to listen to because I wanted to note those down so that I could listen to the same tracks again so I knew and uh, the detail is uh, it's a lot more precise. It's funny, you, you wouldn't expect this, but don't forget these are top of the range capacitors. We're not talking about using, swapping out one cheap capacitor, which is 40p for another one, which is 80p. We're talking about, you know, the two, the two uh, filter caps are a hundred and twenty pound a piece and all the smaller capacitors within the boards are all around anything from five pound to ten pound compared to what I replaced them with which were like 20 pence capacitors now the reason why quad wouldn't have put that level of capacitor in this power amp is to do with costings now because it was set at a price level and obviously there was a design element involved of course there is there's always a design element but audio note use these kaisa capacitors in their top amplifiers going from 5000 upwards they use them in their in their top amplifiers I've been breaking in the new capacitors with this disc, which is uh, really good because it has all different tones and and I put it on, I'll put it on repeat and leave it on a low volume because it it gets a bit annoying because it, it even sets my dog off because of the noise of it that goes up and then it goes down and so I put it on very low so it doesn't upset anybody and I've left it running. But uh, I, I did it for a couple of days on 24-7 uh, to, to, to break them in a little bit to start with. And then I'll have a listening session and then I'll carry on running it back in for another couple of days. So all in all, it's had about seven days with this disc running in.
and then I was, I was listening to this Doug McLeod again breaking the chain now this is a one of those reference recordings I bought this 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 month and this is absolutely a stunning recording it stand, sounded stunning before I'd done the upgrade and now I listened again and you can actually hear certain where his lips actually touch the microphone it was that good uh, it was there before but this has been highlighted to another level this is uh, one of my favourite albums, it's Melanie Gardo, my one and only thrill. Now the first track on this, which is Baby I'm a Fool, you can, I mean the sound stage is wicked, it's so open, and the atmosphere around all the instruments is absolutely stunning, you, just, you, you can almost feel like you're in a club. And uh, I, I mean, obviously, I love this disc so much, so I play it a lot, so I know how good it was before. And again, this has gone to a whole new level again. So I would openly admit that I'm not the best. Uh, I'm dyslexic, and uh, my reading and writing skills are somewhat poor. I can read and write, obviously. But, um. And the way I explain things on these videos often isn't great. Um, I'd admit that. Um, I'm getting slightly better as I go along. But one thing I don't do is I don't make things up. I won't, I won't tell you that this has gone that good if it hasn't. I mean, what would be the point in it? I mean, I do loads of mistakes behind the scenes on the videos I do. You don't see them. I do hundreds of mistakes all the time. I've got cables and cables and cables out in my studio there that never come to the fore because they're not good enough. I have an idea. I'll have a dream. I'll have an idea. I'll make it up and it won't be any good. But I won't show you that. You know, because there's no point. It's, I mean, I could do I could do a video of all the mistakes I made. But this upgrade is not a mistake. And if anybody's interested... And you have a quad 405. So there's there's another site called Keith Snook. And uh, I've read that site over and over again. And, and all the upgrades he's done. And, and I'm sure that they're... I've never heard one of his amplifiers, one of his upgrades to the, to the quad 405. But I'd be very interested to see what that Keith Snook amplifier sounded up against this one. Because uh, this is extremely good now. And, and another good thing is, because I've still got my uncle's 405 that I'm working on, which is that Lucid amplifier that changed the whole inside. But what I've done is I, I, I've upgraded shed loads of that already. Some of it on video, some of it off video. And when I get that one done, then I'll be able to do a comparison. Now, the problem is, is I could do videos and show you audio clips, but... I've come to the conclusion that they they just don't sound very good. When when I'm sitting here listening, I can tell, you know, the difference between tones and bass and treble and everything. But when, when I come to video it, it doesn't sound the same. And it's pointless. It's point, and, 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 and unfortunately, you'll have to just trust my judgment. Someone who's been an audiophile since the early 80s. Um... So there's no point in me doing clips. I know loads of you want clips, but it won't, the reverb in the room and everything. I mean, if you look at other audio files, there's one that you probably all know, Steve Gutenberg, the audiophiliac. Even I watch his videos because he, he, I really like his, the way he comes across and he's really like, you know, eloquent. He doesn't do sound clips because he knows you'll have the same issues. Or if you did, you'd have to do it in a room that was so good. that I mean, and this the problem is in this room as well, is it's near field listening in this room. It's very close. The microphone is too far, too close in the middle here. It doesn't get the, you won't get the full spectrum of sound going on. It's just a bit poor, really. So I'd prefer not to do sound clips. I think you just have to take my judgment on it. And I hope I've built up enough credibility for you to do that. 
So I will do a talking comparison video between the two amps once they're done. Now, I've got an, I've got the old Quad 33 preamp as well, which was my uncle's. And what I want to do is I'm going to restore that as well. <clears throat> and then I can use that with my uncle's, my uncle's preamp and my uncle's power amp together. And I might just use them in a separate system. Um, I'm not sure yet. Because I, I, I very much doubt that, that the that the Lucid amplifier is going to be as good as this one now. I'd be very surprised. But you never know. I mean, we'll try it and we'll see what happens. So, ending thoughts now. Increased bass performance. Um, trebles become a lot more detailed. The sound stage is wider. The imaging has become great within the soundstage. Lovely airiness around instruments. All in all, a nice, smooth performance from this amplifier now. Of course, I didn't know what the other guy had done to it as such. He said he'd refurbed it and he'd changed capacitors. Now, there was one capacitor that I couldn't get initially which was which I replaced with a Nichicon KW capacitor. Now the problem is at first which I didn't notice was the capacitor that he used in it was a po non-polar capacitor and what I did is I replaced it with a directional polar capacitor and to me it didn't sound right and this was a 47 UF 35 volt capacitor okay now audio note case don't make one of that that microfarad so what i replaced it with was a 50 uf by 50 volt and after talking to audio note they said that would be fine so that's what i did and it worked superb So I think we're nearly there now. Um, don't beat me up for my explanations of uh, what I've heard here. And for the doubters out there, try to have a bit more of an upbeat. Uh, it's no point keep on, you know, calling out things that, that are rubbish, saying things are rubbish if you haven't heard them. Now, I know, I know for a fact none of you have tried these. Or somebody might have out there. But the people that are commenting and giving me negatives on it. You haven't heard these. And I know the reason why. is because they're expensive. And a lot of people wouldn't pay that money. But bearing in mind. If I've spent £330 on this amplifier. Okay. I, I reckon I'd be hard pushed. To get an amp. Anywhere close to this. A power amp for say. I don't know, three, three thousand, maybe four thousand now. It's got that good, and I haven't even rewired the inside of it yet. I'm going to rewire all the inside, either with, with uh, Ono continuous cast copper or Ono continuous cast silver. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. Still got a little bit to do on that yet, but uh, it's going to be quite expensive for the wire as well. So I, I don't know. But all in all, I'm really happy. So I think that's it for this video. Um, I hope you like it. And I hope I haven't uh, upset too many people with what I've said. So thanks for watching another Tweaker Man video. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to give this video a like. Don't forget to press that notification bell. So you're notified each time I upload a new video. And thank you for watching, guys.